Hey guys, welcome to another episode and unfortunately I have to record this again because when trying to edit the video I noticed that I lost uh, some of the introduction footage so I'll record it again and explain what's wrong with the laptop. The laptop is Lenovo Legion 5. The exact model is... let me have a look. The exact model is 15ARH05 and what's wrong with it? Well, as you can imagine it's not working but uh, I already opened it before um, and well I'm not gonna record it again I'll just tell you to make the video shorter. So basically what I did, I removed the heat sink, RAM, sink, RAM sticks, everything uh, and measured the entire board and I didn't find anything wrong with it. So, uh, so everything looked okay, no shorts, resistances were, were looking okay but the laptop was not working so my guess and, and you know obvious thing to try was to flash the BIOS and so I did. Alright so I have the laptop here and I have the power connected uh, the battery is disconnected let me press the power button right here As you could see, flashing the BIOS did not help with supposedly working BIOS. Uh, there was no change, no, no difference after doing that. So, well, all the resistances look fine. We have some voltages, but the laptop is not starting. I tried some things off camera and I think I found the problem. So. Right now I have the power connected again and if you can see here I'm holding a small heatsink on the CPU. What I will do, I will now power on the laptop but pressing the, uh, pressing the CPU quite a bit with my finger and the fan is spinning, I'm not sure if you can see it, probably not because it's on the side but it's did spin for a second and we have a picture guys and we'll have no boot device screen like so and now if I release the pressure on the CPU oh it still works actually that's nice uh, it's gonna get hot in a second um, but if I remove the... okay it's working actually but the thing is uh, as you can see it's probably the connection I'll switch it off because I don't want it to overheat and the CPU is probably very hot yeah it is very hot right now so what's the problem? the problem is basically probably a poor connection no connection on, on some pads under the CPU. So now ideally I would remove the CPU, uh, reboil it, put it back in place, also check if, if there are any ripped pads under the CPU on, on, on the board itself or, or the CPU. Uh, but uh, well the problem is you may know that or, or if you don't know I'm telling you now there Lenovo puts some black glue compound whatever you call it uh, in the corners of 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 the of the main chips so like here on the CPU 
uh, also in the corners of the GPU and in the corners of the RAM chips as well. So the problem with that is even if you melt the solder balls uh, under the chip, you the, the glue is still holding the chip in place and you have to use some kind of like spudger or something and just rip it off because this glue it, it gets softer with the height with high temperature but still you know the solder is melted but uh, but the CPU is not moving you have to just put something underneath and just rip it with that glue hoping that you don't damage the the board the pads uh, under the CPU and so on so having that said I'm fully aware that uh, that reball would be the best solution and I wanted to do that actually but well I'm also aware that as I said removing the CPU can cause some damage on, on the board if you don't do it well it should be fine but you know it's risky and it's also uh, it's also a lot of work to clean the glue after uh, and, and and you know rebuild the CPU and and, and, and solder it back. Uh, so what I will do, I will try a reflow. I'm as I said, I'm fully aware that it's not recommended method and rebuild would be better. But if I can save myself that work and you know and, and save a lot of time i will probably start with that so uh, and because of the glue actually it may be a bad idea because it's possible that the solder will actually uh, you know uh, the solder balls will join under the cpu and for example will get a short after of course i, I will check that before turning on, on the the laptop i also i will also measure the resistances on on those coils on on the cpu coils just to have some reference and you know make sure after the reflow it's going to be fine um also what's important um i mean i hope nothing will will happen under the cpu but also exposing the board to high temperature can cause similar effect uh, uh, under the gpu or the ram chips so what i will do i will try to just heat up this area of the board with the cpu uh, and you know have the lower temperature here in this area to save the gpu and not cause uh, any you know shorts uh, under the chip here so yeah you may like it you may not like it but I guess it's reasonable to to try of course if you know if if the reflow won't help or even cause more damage cause a short we will expose the CPU to a heat once more because we will have to do the ripple anyway but I mean for fun for science let's try and maybe we'll save some time Let's see how it goes. Okay, so the preheater is set to 320 degrees Celsius and on the board we currently have something over 100 uh, now it's floating but something around 110 120 even more 130 depends on where we measure so this side obviously is is, is warmer all right so let me apply some more flux i hope it's gonna melt uh, quickly we basically want to reflow this part here because I, I feel like I was touching this part more it, w it was getting connection and, w and started working so but let's put the flux everywhere just in case Oh, 
All right. And let's start heating. All right, and the board cooled down. Let's grab some ground. Let's turn on the multimeter. Let's see what the resistance is to ground, just to calibrate and, and see how much we have to deduct. So it's 0 0.2 of an ohm. 0. Yeah, 0 0.2, let's say. Uh, okay, let's check our CPU first. That's most important. And probably first thing we need to check. And we have 8.5, so that's good, as it was before. Uh, then we have the CPU, around 6 ohms, looking good. All those should measure the same. Those are CPU phases. And there's, okay, that's the same. Then we have the GPU, it's gonna be super low, close to like short, but we know it's 0 0.2 to ground. So if it's any sh in any higher, and it is, it's like 0 0.4, if we deduct the, the probes resistance, so that's good. And this should measure the same, of course. And then we have VRAM coil, and it's 40 ohms, that's perfect. Let's check the other uh, resistances quickly. So this one here, it's in kilo ohms, this one. 56 ohms, I think it was the same before, or something around this. Mega ohms here, here. Hundreds of, of ohms, that's for memory. Kilo ohms and... And mega ohms, hundreds of kilo ohms here. And the BIOS chip, leg number eight. Kilo ohms, that's the GPU BIOS chip, I think. And the main BIOS chip, I think, is here. Leg number eight. In kilo ohms. So, not sure if the reflow did the job, but at least it didn't make it any worse. So, I think it's safe to power on the board and then see if we have success or not. Okay, so I have assembled the laptop, um, like most essential uh, things, most of the connectors. I haven't put the battery in because it's not needed. Uh, no Wi-Fi, it's isolated, not to short anything with the metal endings. Uh, I also misinformed you during the video, so there is a CMOS battery, like separate one here, but it was just covered by the main battery and I didn't realize it's, it, it's this wire and this plug here. Uh, so just to just to add that. And I haven't ch cleaned the heat sink or haven't replaced the all, all the dry thermal paste. For just to test, for a quick test, it's gonna be fine. Uh, if we are successful, uh, then of course I'll uh, disassemble it again, clean the heatsink, clean the fans, change the thermal paste and everything. So yeah, that's that. And yeah, I mean, before when I touched the CPU with my finger, but not very, like I didn't use too much force, it, it worked. When I screwed in the heatsink, so you could think, you know, it, it will squeeze the board and, and, and the CPU to the board and it will work, and it did not. So I think it's a good test if we have the heatsink on, screwed to the board. Um, if we get the picture instantly, there's a big chance we actually fix the laptop. So let me now connect the, the power supply, uh, like so. 
Oh, it's starting by itself. So we have the fan spin. It's probably restarting. Let me open the the laptop so you can see better. Is it spinning again? No, it's not. But light on the power button is on. Maybe we need to press the power button. And uh, the power button icon on the side is blinking exactly as it was before. <laughs> so, well guys, looks like reball, reflow is, is not the good thing or maybe we didn't do it properly. Let me push on the CPU a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't work. So exactly as before, nothing really changed. I mean, I'll give it one more try. If, if, it, if it doesn't work, just to confirm, I'll remove the heatsink and do the same thing as I did before, just with a small radiator. Oh, it's actually powering on, is it? There was light on the keyboard, but now it's it's not working. No, it's it's still blinking, so nothing changed here. All right, guys. So it looks like it didn't work. We have to disassemble the laptop again. Remove the CPU. Remove the glue and rebuild the the CPU. And well, one more thing. So. <laughs> As you could see, we didn't get a picture, so I removed the heatsink uh, and wanted to disassemble the laptop once again to to get the board and put it on preheater, remove the CPU, and it's good that I haven't done it. I mean, it turned out when I removed the heatsink that well, if you don't get a picture, maybe you know check if you connected the screen ribbon and I haven't and not only it was not connected but it was only stuck it was also stuck under the motherboard so uh, I had to remove the fan this fan as well and, and, and this screw right here to lift the board a little bit to to get the the ribbon out and well and yeah, now it's connected so I mean I haven't tried yet uh, so let's let's feel those emotions together guys I'm connecting the power now again and let's see if we get a picture we have a fan spin a little bit it stopped but do we get a picture no picture but maybe we need to turn it on Getting warm. I cannot feel like this, but okay. No, I think it's the same. L let me push on the CPU. Thank you for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments what you think about this repair and since you made it till the end of the video I'm pretty sure it's worth smashing that subscribe button.